All right. Hello, everyone. So this is our first uh, lecture of unit two, um, starting in on chapter four here. And we're going to sort of change pace a little bit in that we're going to start introducing some math into our chemistry course. Um, math is actually a really big part of chemistry. Um, and chemists use numbers a little bit of a different way than mathematicians do, because in chemistry, our numbers always uh, correspond to measurements that are made. Um, they're not just like these abstract symbolic things like they are in a math class. Um, and because of that, we have to sort of use them in a special way. And so we'll talk about that. Uh, the one thing I want to say is that math can sometimes be a sticking point for people's understanding in chemistry. Even if you've been doing well in this course uh, up until this point, if you're not a strong uh, student in math, things might start to be challenging at this point. So um, of course, as always, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Um, your Alex uh, homework system is gonna be pretty good for that with, when it comes to these numerical calculations because it can just generate um, new novel problems to give you. Um, but also, of course, you know, use your resource. Uh, that's me, the instructor. So reach out for office hours if you guys need um, some extra help. Uh, I don't want this to be the stumbling block for students who are otherwise doing well in this course, uh, just because now there's math introduced. Okay, um, so again, the chapter is like how chemists use numbers. And so we're going to talk about like a lot about measurements. And one of the key fundamentals of a measurement are the units of those measurements. Um, and again, this is what makes a science class very different from a math class is uh, when we're talking about numbers in chemistry, we're talking about we measured five milliliters or um, 20 grams. There's always these units that correspond to these measurements. So the, there's what's called the international system of units. Basically, a long time ago, a group of chemists got together and uh, they sort of realized that, oh, we have been measuring over here in America in pounds, and y'all have been measuring over here in Europe in grams. We need to come up with this unified system, this international system of units that we can all agree on. And that's what we're going to take our chemistry measurements with. Okay. Um, and so there are different quantities that we're going to be measuring, and they have different units associated with them. So if you're measuring mass, that would be measured in grams. Length would be measured in meters. Okay, and so the symbol for that is the little m, symbol for grams is the little g. Notice that length isn't measured in feet, inches, that sort of stuff. It's measured in meters. Um, scientists actually use the metric system. Um, and in terms of time, it's going to be measured in seconds. Um, so yeah, at least sort of the standard in chemistry isn't to measure things in minutes or hours, but always just in seconds. Temperature, so seconds, and the abbreviation for that is the little letter S. Temperature is measured in something called Kelvin. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get to temperature, but that symbol is big K. And then when we get to volume, chemists use liters for measuring volume. So not gallons like we are cups or pints or whatever we do in America, uh, what's called the imperial system. The chemists use liters, which is again, part of the metric system. Okay. Um, you know, just a little bit of difference about why we say mass versus weight. Weight is actually uh, dependent on the force of gravity for wherever you are. So your weight here on Earth would be different than your weight on the moon. Uh, a mass is something that's just intrinsic to a, uh, a thing of matter. Um, and that's going to be the same regardless of where in the universe it's measured. So it's not dependent on the force of gravity. They are very roughly the same quantity. Um, but we have a method of measuring mass, for example, using what's called a balance, which if you took this balance up to the moon, it would give you the same amount for how much you are in your mass versus your uh, bathroom scale would give you a different reading. So they're very subtly different. I don't want to get too bogged down in it. But um, yeah, the important thing be being that a mass is sort of characteristic to a piece of matter. It doesn't change no matter where it's measured. 
Um, again, length is measured in meters times in seconds and getting comfortable with these abbreviations are gonna be important. Um, kilogram is another sort of abbreviation or um, an add-on of gram. And we're gonna talk about these metric prefixes, kilo, centi, all that sort of good stuff here in a moment. Oh, right now, actually. Okay, um, so sort of like uh, we have this base measurement that we talked about. So an, a good example, again, would be grams, which again is abbreviated by G. So that's how we measure mass. We use these metric prefixes depending on the scale of what we're talking about. So for example, um, human beings, just like based on where we are on the scale of our mass, it's more convenient to talk about the mass of a human being in kilograms. Okay, and that metric prefix kilo, I'll actually use a lighter color, metric prefix kilo, again, that's that abbreviation K, corresponds to a thousand grams, right? So what this chart is saying is one kilogram, for example, is equal to a thousand grams. So by putting those metric prefixes before our measurement, we're kind of changing the scale at which we talk about stuff. Likewise, if we wanted to talk about the mass of something really tiny, we might talk about it in terms, so this would be for something on the large side. Um, if we wanted to talk about something fairly tiny, we might refer to its mass in terms of milligrams, okay? So that's that milli prefix M again means one milligram equals 0 0.001 grams. Okay, you could talk about the mass of something tiny in kilograms, you would just be using a really small number like 0 0.00001 kilograms or something like that, right? So by using these different metric prefixes, we're sort of using. Um, putting the number in some a, a way that's more convenient into a scale that's more convenient, okay? It's not very, like, let's say that you weighed 50 kilograms. Well, that would correspond to five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six milligrams. 50 is a much more convenient number to use than 500, oh, no, sorry, 50 million. Right, they're both the same thing. They're both saying the same piece of information. It's just a matter of convenience. Okay, um, so again, just to sort of like focus on this table and again, sort of uh, identify what exactly it's saying. Let's see, let me erase my markings here. Let's use a different sort of unit instead of grams. Let's talk about length measurements, which would be in meters little m, okay, if I said instead centimeters, well, one, again, how I'm going to read this chart is one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01 meters. I could say the same thing using the exponent form, right, one centimeter is equal to 10 to the negative two meters. All right, 10 to the negative 2.01, those are the same thing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about scientific notation here in a second. But yes, these numbers are exactly the same, just sort of different representations. You can punch it into your calculator to convince yourself that that's actually the case. Likewise, if I were to say, let's use a different one. How about micro? This is saying micrometers. Well, one micrometer is equal to 0 0.000001 meters, or another way of saying that is that one micrometer is equal to 10 to the negative six meters. And again, you can punch yourself, punch this into the calculator. Sorry, cleaning things up here. Punch this into the calculator to convince yourself that this number is the same thing as that number there. Right, the exponent form is just more convenient, uh, sort of a shorthand, more convenient way to represent, especially really big and really small numbers. 
Um, so, you know, you may have heard of gigabytes is how we measure uh, the memory of a computer or the space on your hard drive. Um, giga, bytes, this would be one gigabyte is equal to one billion bytes. Okay, bytes are like units of memory in a computer. We're not gonna to talk too much about what a byte is. But what does this prefix mean? Same thing it means if we were talking about meters or grams or seconds or um, liters or anything like that. We can stick these metric prefixes in front of it. And so one gigabyte in this case is 10 to the nine bytes, right? Um, so it's sort of changing the scale uh, with which you're talking about a measurement. And it's all about just making it more convenient. Okay, so now how to make how to put something into a more convenient um, uh, unit here. And what I mean by that is if I said like 5,000 grams, we're going to see that it would be more convenient to express this number in kilograms than it would in grams. So how do we do that? Okay, so by changing the number we, you sort of think about it as bouncing the decimal place a certain number of uh, jumps. And those numbers of jumps will change the units, okay? So if I'm bouncing it to the left, I'm getting larger on my scale here, okay? So for example, kilo is a thousand, that's one, two, three jumps. Sort of just zoom in here. My decimal points here, I would go one, two, three jumps for, sorry, one, two, three jumps to get it to that um, thousands place for kilo. So for my grams measurement here for 5,000, one, two, three, that means that 5,000 grams is equal to five kilograms. Okay, so again, by, by more convenient, I just mean talking about smaller, you know, a smaller sort of quantity. It's more convenient to say five kilograms than it is 5,000 grams. So anything on sort of the larger side of the periodic, ta our periodic table, of our uh, table here means that we're bouncing our decimal place to the left. So just going back to our original chart here, let me get rid of some of these markings. Anything larger than one means that I'm bouncing my decimal place to the left, okay? Um, just to do another example here, let's do, four million five hundred thousand meters. Can we put this in a more convenient unit than meters. Well, let's look at our mega prefix. That would mean that we're bouncing our decimal place. We'll even use pink. For mega, I'm bouncing our decimal place. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I do that to this over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could express the same measurement as 4.5 megameters. And again, 4.5 is just sort of easier, more convenient than 4,500,000. Okay, so that would be going into a larger sort of set of units using those large prefixes. If I'm going into one of the smaller scales, anything smaller than one, I'm going the other direction. This would be the equivalent to bouncing my decimal to the right. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say that uh, I took a measurement and it was 0 0.0063 seconds. Is there more a convenient, a more convenient set of units that I could use than seconds or than, uh, yeah, than seconds? Well, let's see. So if I took, let's look at Millie here. Milli would be bouncing now, not to the left, but to the right. One, two, three places. 
So if I take this same measurement and bounce it one, two, three places, I could express the same measurement as instead 6.3 milliseconds. Okay, I can look at centi, centi's two. So I could one, two bounces would be centi. I could have just as equivalently have only done this. Let me use a slightly darker blue. One, two jumps and express the same exact number as 0 0.63 centiseconds, okay? Um, the milliseconds would have kind of been more considered to be more appropriate, but both of these are, are very, you know, they're the exact same thing. They're the same measurement, right? Uh, 0 0.0063 seconds is the same thing as 6.3 milliseconds is the same thing as 0.63 centiseconds. They're just like more convenient ways of representing it. This would be considered milliseconds in this particular example would be considered the more convenient way to do it because I have a nice simple number like six in the ones place. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's how we can sort of move a particular measurement from its base, base measurement, like in this case, seconds or meters into one of these different metric prefixes. Okay, um, so now let's let's play the same game uh, using these various measurements. Uh, some of these we've seen before, like meters, grams, and seconds. Hertz is um, a unit for measuring frequency. We won't really talk too much about that. Um, w is you know for measuring watts. We won't really talk too much about those either. But nonetheless, we can do our same metric prefix game with any unit. Right, so these are just, I mean, this might as well be, a, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a smiley face and we could still use these metric prefixes in order to make these me measurements more convenient. Okay, um, one, let's just real quick, uh, sort of remind ourselves here again, complete our little cheat sheet. Everything larger than one would be bouncing our decimal place to the left. Everything smaller than one would be bouncing our decimal place to the right. So actually, I think I can. Copy this over so we can have a little bit of a cheat sheet while we work through these problems. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna make these more convenient. So first of all, first thing we're gonna do is look at our measurement start with A, decided what's gonna make this number more convenient, bouncing the decimal place to the left or bouncing the decimal place to the right. In this case, I'm gonna be bouncing my decimal place to the right. And one, two, three would be a really good stopping point. And I can see that milli is if I bounce my decimal place one, two, three to the right. Okay, so this would be equivalent to 1.63 millimeters. Notice both milli and meters are represented as small m's. Okay, what about 9,125 hertz? What would be more convenient if I bounce my decimal place to the left or the right? In this case, be a little bit easier to look at if I bounce it to the left. One, two, three. And notice that kilo is one, two, three bounces. Okay, so this would be equivalent to 9.125 kilohertz. All right, what about this measurement here in grams? Do I want to bounce to the left or the right? All right so I'm going to bounce to the right. One, two, three, four, five would be a good stopping point. But if I go to micro, notice that this isn't five. That I don't have any bounces that correspond to five. And actually, you can see, well, let me point this out actually in a second. I do have one micro that would correspond to six, right? So micro one, two, three, four, 
five, six. So in this case, this would be equivalent to 72.5 micrograms. And again, the number of bounces you could sort of see maybe even easier to see if we look at our exponents, right? So 10 to the negative six, that's saying six bounces to the right. When we did our milli conversion, we had 10 to the negative three for milli, that's three bounces to the right. When we were talking about kilo, that was three bounces, but it was to the left, and that corresponds to 10 to the positive three in our exponent. Okay. Taking our next measurement, do we want to bounce to the left or to the right? We're going to bounce to the right and we're going to bounce one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if I look on my chart here, there's no bounces that correspond to eight. The closest one would be this nine for nano right there. So indeed, I'm going to go one more nine. And so this measurement would be equivalent to 89 nanoseconds. Okay, what about the W? I'm going to go to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I do have one that corresponds to nine bounces. That's giga. So this would be equivalent to 1.21 gigawatts. Okay, um, just notice that in terms of the available units, with the exception of deci and centi, they're always spaced out in jumps of three. So three, six, nine, you can see that it goes that way in both directions. Three, six, nine in the small direction, as well as three, six, nine to 12 in the large direction. So deci and centi are kind of outliers. All right, talking about temperature in particular, temperature is kind of its own weird thing. Um, with our, a lot of our units, we're gonna see it's very easy to convert um, between say inches and centimeters as multiplication problems. And we'll, we'll get to that here. The first one we're gonna learn about converting units is temperature because it's different from all the other ones in that they're addition or subtraction problems, okay? Um, so we talked about how um, the, I see an error here. We talked about, I'll fix that on the slide, but, um, we talked about how Kelvin is considered the SI unit for temperature. Well, Kelvin is really easily related to Celsius in that you take the temperature in degrees Celsius and add 273.15, and that will take you to the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit is a little bit more of a pain in the butt. Fahrenheit is, of course, the temperature scale that we use here in the US. If you turn on the Weather Channel, they're telling you the temperature in Fahrenheit. Um, Celsius is one of the ones that is part of the metric system. Um, it's used pretty often in the lab as well. Again, Kelvin is considered the SI unit, uh, but nonetheless, Celsius is pretty common. Um, but then it's what is, you know, the rest of the world is. Um, the weather man and the rest of the world is telling the temperature in is Celsius. And we convert to that using the following formula. So if I have the temperature in Fahrenheit, I subtract 32 and multiply that, pro, uh, that difference by five ninths. If I'm converting from, Fahren um, from Celsius to Fahrenheit, I put in my temperature in Celsius here, multiply it by five ninths, and then take that product and add 32, okay? So these are the three 
uh, temperature scales that are commonly used. Again, Fahrenheit, that's what it's in common usage in America. Celsius is the metric system in common usage in the rest of the world. And Kelvin is what we like in the science lab. Um, the thing about Kelvin that makes it so whatever in the science lab is that zero degrees Kelvin has a really special meaning. That's what's called absolute zero. And you can't get colder than zero degrees Kelvin. Zero degrees Kelvin is actually when all atomic motion sort of stops and you can't get any colder than that. All right, if we're gonna use these equations to convert, let's just do some practice here. So 36 degrees Celsius early in the morning and 37 degrees Celsius in the afternoon. Um, let's display these temperatures on the Kelvin scale. So I'm just gonna go back to my equation here. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So I'm just gonna plug in each of these temperatures. So 36 plus 273.15, that'll give me my temperature in Kelvin, which is equal to 309.15. Likewise, if I wanted to do it for 37 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, that would take me to 310.15, okay? Uh, important to note here, notice that a, a, a range, a temperature range of one degree Celsius, for example, 36 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius is, um, you get a similar range for your temperature in Kelvin. The value is different, 309, uh, 0.15 and 310.15, but the difference there is still one, right? So an increase in of one unit Celsius is the same as an increase in one unit Kelvin. It's different if we did the Fahrenheit, okay? So let's actually convert these temperatures to Fahrenheit. I'm now gonna use this equation here. Fahrenheit equals nine fifths. Right, let's just double check, yep. So now again, I'm gonna just plug in my variables, my 36. This would give me a degree Fahrenheit of 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. If I wanted to plug in the other value, 9 fifths 37 plus 32, 98.7. Degrees F. So notice that this actually, these actually have a difference of 1.8, not one. So an increase of one degree Celsius corresponds to an increase of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, but um, we'll practice using these equations. Uh, they're not too bad once you get the hang of it, but yes, these are our temperature conversions. And again, I'll have to make that correction in the notes. 